Tichi has been one of the coolest archetypes to come out of B5B's era. It's synchro focused strategy that revolves around bringing out the bigger monster using your smaller ones has always been an aspect about 5Ds that people have always respected, especially in a pre OTK era where combos took a lot more skill to pull off compared to nowadays where things are more streamlined. Back then, things were a lot harder to set up and to make sure you had all the right pieces. TGs have always had this real interesting style to them. They're all kind of mixed with tech and they all have like machinery on them, despite none of them being machines except for some of the biggest monsters. And even in the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds anime, the character that played the TG deck was actually a cyborg. He wasn't like fully human. In his final duel with Yusei, we actually learned that he was a human from Yusei's future, where he was actually a professional turbo duelist. But after the NRD reactor went crazy because of too much synchro summoning and created the mech lords to, to counterbalance that, there ended up being a post-apocalyptic future where now he met the main villain of the series and the main villain of the series sent him back in time to help out Yusei so that Yusei could sort of put the pieces together for the villain's giant arc thing in the sky to stop synchro summoning for good. This character went by many names throughout the show. We first met him as Bruno, then we came to figure out he was actually this really strong rogue duelist called Visor, who actually taught Yusei how to axel synchro and to do all the clear mind stuff, which was pretty cool. Then, once uh, they, they went up into the arc after the end of the World Grand Prix, he revealed his true name to be Antimony, which is um nickname given to him by what he considered to be his friend which was the main villain but the thing is is that um antimony was fighting for his friend but he also grew close to team 5ds in his time being bruno and he was kind of conflicted between which side he wanted to be on but he knew that he still had a mission to fulfill part of him wanted yusei to, to succeed so he wasn't completely a villain he was more of just this interesting character and Having a cool ass character like that kind of makes the deck that they play even more desirable. So Antimony was a duelist from Yusei's future named Johnny. And Johnny was a turbo duelist who used synchros just like everyone else until, you know, the mech lords came and fucked everything up. So when Z1 turned him into Antimony and bring him back into the past, still used his own synchro deck, except he was given this sick ass duel runner that had its own energy reactor in it. So instead of his synchro monsters causing the, you know, eventual NRD problem that Yusei's future had, he has his own NRD reactor in his dual runner that anytime he synchro summons, it's like the new support from Age of Overlord. It's like the things that he says. First he says limited remover, and then he goes like all clear, and then after the all clear, it's like synchro okay, and then he synchro summons. Instead of just playing his synchro monsters recklessly, he has to make sure that everything that he's doing does not interfere with the NRD reactor. Then synchro monsters come together like they do in the anime. All clear. And I think that's why he has a lot of energy when he's synchro summoning. And that might just also be his professional turbo duel side trying to like work up a sort of crowd that used to be there. Even though the crowd isn't there, he still says the things that would like work them up. It is like kind of hype when he says, synchro Come on! That's also why TG All Clear is a pretty cool card because it's like uh, that's that's the part where it's doing all the calculations and making sure everything is set to keep going. I don't think this is ever confirmed in the anime, at least not not in the dub. Maybe it's confirmed in the Japanese. I haven't watched the Japanese dub all the way through, but in the English anime, every time you see Visor, it's not really explained what his dual runner is or why it's sick as hell compared to anyone else's. And it's like, well, probably because the main villain created it. But what's cool is that. Um, on TG All Clear's artwork is actually TG Star Guardian. And Star Guardian is another cool one because it basically looks like Antimony himself. I always love when cards do that. His dual runner is basically Star Guardian's arm. He also has like a sword and stuff. So it's a really cool synchro. It would have been a, a little meta for this to be in like the anime. Like imagine if Kite summoned like Number Hunter in the anime, you know, like it would have been a little meta, but as like a support card, it's kind of cool. Now, the thing about all clear is that in the anime, all TGs actually counted as machine types as well as their own types. So like that was like one of their lingering effects while they were on or continuous effects while they were on the field. That has never really been a thing in the actual game of Yu-Gi-Oh until now with TG all clear, allowing all TG monsters on the field to become machines while it's face up on the field. It also gives you a lot of follow-up, allowing you 
an extra normal summon and it lets you search a TG if you get rid of another. Very well balanced card considering what the new support does. Lemon removal, which is a two for two search. So you drop one, add two. Basically is the best starter that the deck could have. It is a little vulnerable to hand traps because when people see a two for two card is a very easy like negate target and so that's one issue i have with this card but i mean if it resolves you have full combo it's kind of like m city it's like mocking a redeployment it's a high risk high reward kind of card that gives you what you need to build the board that you want considering this new support i have come to realize that there is this core for the core for tg and what i mean by four for the core i mean there are four particular tg cards that you need in rotation to build any board of TGs that you want. The way that TGs play in the actual TCG is that they use their smaller pieces to build up their bigger ones. And so the four most important small pieces post Age of Overlord are now Rocket Salamander, the new level one starter, Screw Serpent, it came out a few years ago in uh, Savage Strike, and it's a uh, junk synchro for the deck, basically. Tank Rub, which is your best pivot synchro card, so it allows you to pivot between it being a tuner or a non-tuner, and then it brings out a token on synchro summon. Although it, it's a little slow of a card by itself, when mixed with the other pieces, it, it actually pulls its weight. And then TG Mighty Striker, which is the brand new synchro out of Age of Overlord, that kind of pulls all of its weight if Mighty Striker resolves, that sets up the entirety of the turn because it doesn't just search a TG spell on summon, but it can also get you access to, to the new TG counter trap when it's sent to grave. So it effectively can get you two TG spells or traps if you play it correctly. But if you don't have the tank rub in rotation, you, you may have to sacrifice the counter trap to get tank rub in grave. That is like what is most important. These are the four for the core. These are the four cards that you build every board off of. There is a fifth card. There is over Dragonar, which is kind of like the junk speeder for the deck. So when it's synchro summoned, you special summon any number of TG monsters from grave in defense. And you also cannot special summon TG, uh, monsters for the rest of the turn except TGs. And that's not just from extra deck, that's from anywhere. Dragonar, you summon it twice because you need another level five generic synchro and that's really the the only issue that this deck has is that there's not enough level five non-tuner synchros like you have your star guardian and your wonder magician as your tuner synchros but non-tuner synchros you really only have dragonar hyper librarian which is limited and power guardian which no one uses because it's not 2011 <laughs> it's better just to play the second or third dragonar just to make up for the lack of diversity in terms of some of the synchro monsters. Yes, Dragonar is important. It is your junk speeder and it does need to resolve. Whereas Salamander, Screw Serpent, and Tank Rub will always be used differently based on the board that you're trying to build. Same thing for Mighty Striker. It'll always be used differently for the board you're trying to build. Sometimes you'll pop it with TG all clear. Other times you may use it to make a Baron so that you can protect your uh, Dragonar. Mighty Striker usually has no real point in staying on the field by the time Dragonar comes out, because you could, it's better to send it to the grave just to get and make some use out of it so that you can revive it with uh, Dragonar. And the kind of sad thing about TG Mighty Striker is that only the new TG spell and trap cards are searchable with his effect. Unfortunately, the older TG spell and trap cards are not T.G. They are just, they just have the letters TG. And so because they don't have the dots in the name, they are not searchable off of Mighty Striker's effect. And I don't know why they would do that. I don't know why these haven't been er er errated to work with some of the newer support. A lot of these spells and traps are kind of not that useful. The only one I could see being useful is the TG1 EM1. And that one is kind of like a creature swap. There's rarely a time you'd want to search this instead of just searching for like the counter trap or for all clear. Like I don't think this card existing would have broken TG that much. It's, it's a little unfortunate that Mighty Striker is only limited to the new support for TG, but it, it, it kind of is what it is. It still works and old, at the end of the day, that's that's all that matters. I wanted to show you guys two different TG builds. One that got first place at a locals. I'm just gonna go over the list really quickly. So two Screw Serpent, two Salamander, Drillfish and Tank Rub, and then Limiter Remover and All Clear. And what you come to realize is that the TG package does not actually have to be that big for TGs to work in a deck. And that's because Mighty Striker, it is your real starter. Like, you know how Isold is the real starter for Infernoble? Well, now it may be like Angelica or Isold, but like pre-Dune, it was always Isold was like the real starter. Like the deck did not really get started until Isold resolved. For TGs, it's nine out of 10 times Mighty Striker is your real starter. There's rarely a time where you 
you'd prefer to go into Dragonar before going into Mighty Striker. But most of the times, it's Mighty Striker that's going to be your real starter, and that's going to get your combo started. So as long as you have a way into this card, regardless of what way it is, you're still going to be able to play the game. That's why you can focus less on playing an overabundance of TG cards and kind of focus more on having a simpler engine with more non-engine to play around things better. We're seeing the Kepler Lamia combo. I think this is the best normal summon for TGs. Like unironically, it's not even a TG card that's the best normal summon. It's Kepler that's the best normal summon because it's a one card way into Mighty Striker. There aren't that many of those at the moment <laughs> besides like one for one. So Kepler is the only one card combo normal summon that gets you into Mighty Striker that is like worth playing. And it's not even a brick if you draw the gate. It's really only a brick if you draw Lamia by yourself. If you draw Kepler or gate, you're still good because most of your TGs are level one anyway. So as long as you have gate, you can kind of just get into your TG stuff from there. Now you may also see the uh, wanted poster package, the, the simple spoils package because a Salamander is a level one fire and it contributed itself to bring out Tank Grub. And so basically you go wanted poster Dia Bellstar into Snake Eye Ash. Ash can search Salamander, Salamander Tribute, bring out Tank Grub. And that kind of solves two things because now you have Tank Grub in rotation, as well as you have access to a Mighty Striker Synchro Summon meaning you both get your four for the core in rotation and you also get the double spell and trap off of mighty striker you get the all clear plus the tg close off of mighty striker we see cross out here because ultimately this deck kind of has no way to interact with the opponent's hand traps unless you have a, a sort of like convenient play into Baron. Most times you're gonna be playing into hand traps. Like there's there's really no other way about it. So cross out is like the best way to stop that. Now, if you can't afford, if you don't feel like playing cross out or like you don't have access to them, there are alternative ways to play around hand traps. And we're gonna get into some of those as the video goes on. But just, but for now, I think if you're gonna play this, this deck competitively right now, I do think cross out is like the best answer to hand traps. And it's also the most convenient answer on top of called by. It kind of helps you too because now you have a lot of non-engine hand traps in your deck that can kind of just hinder the opponent. Like cross out is a great best of both worlds kind of thing. You have the best defense is a good offense because now you have the defense with the hand traps and the offense with cross out stopping hand traps. The extra deck for TG is something that is very player preference. There are some kind of staples at the moment. So Glaive Blaster, which is the new level 12 synchro. It used to be Harvard Cannon. Glaive Blaster allows you to sort of like con control the board, especially if your opponent starts summoning monsters from extra deck. It also allows you to set up for your TG close, and we're gonna get into some of those combos later. By mixing Glaive Blaster with a Kenton Dragon, you get to make Calamity. Blade Blaster itself is a really cool way to go into Crimson during your opponent's turn, even though you're gonna be locked into TG during your turn. It's, it's a really good card for that. Baron is also a good card, not just for sometimes being able to protect your combos, but most times I see it used, it's to make during your opponent's turn and kind of just give you that extra interruption and you know the extra chance to like pivot into other cards during your turn some people also play chaos angel in this slot because what what you may find is that your level 5 tuner synchro and your level 5 non-tuner synchro are like light and dark it's also kind of funny because you can make king calamity using its regular summoning condition and so i know calamity is going to be very likely to get hit on the next list so they may not hit calamity because because they may want to keep centurion around and in in case Calamity gets it, there is another really good synchro that you can make that we're going to get into the combos for later because it's really good, especially when mixed with Glade Blaster. You probably already know what it is if you're familiar with TG. Hyper Librarian and Wonder Magician. Now, Wonder Magician is actually only necessary if you want to make Calamity without using Crimson. Wonder Magician has to pop a spell and trap on summon. It's, it's mandatory. And you can pop your own TG all clear after using all of its effects, you can get rid of it. And then now your TG monsters aren't all machine anymore. And now that allows you to make Calamity because now your Dragonar is a dark synchro non-tuner again. So Wonder Magician plus a Mighty Striker plus a Dragonar, that's two tuners plus a non-tuner Dragon Synchro. Dark Dragon Synchro, by the way. Double Star Guardian. This is the one thing that I kind of don't agree with because Star Guardian's effect, neither of them are on Synchro Summon, they're on Special Summon, which means that if you get the one Star Guardian to Grave, you can simply just summon a Dragonar and then revive Star Guardian and then it'll still be live in its effect. If they play the Bestials, I feel like it kind of is what it is and I wouldn't really be playing it at multiples personally, but this was the guy who got first place probably around a month ago at his local. So the list isn't perfect, but it's definitely a player preference kind of thing. Like it's just not mandatory for you to play two Star Guardian. 
As a matter of fact, you might even want to bump Dragonar up to three in some scenarios because your your non-tuner level fives are in some ways more important than your tuner level fives for the reason I explained earlier because sometimes you run out of those those level five non-tuners. So Trident Launcher is an interesting card in TG because it's only used in hands where you brick with uh, Salamander. If you brick with Salamander, that's when you summon out TG Trident Launcher. Otherwise, you probably don't need to go into this card at all. It has a really weird effect on some because you have to be able to summon one from each hand deck and graveyard. So if, if you don't have a TG in your hand, it, its effect just whiffs, meaning you just went into it for nothing. But if, if you do set it up correctly, it can actually go pretty hard because then it'll like allow you to keep on playing. Interesting card. Dark is a card. I'm not really sure what utility it has in this deck. I don't know how they would make Dark other than with like Diabell Star or without using one of their synchros or maybe like a Kepler or something. Because I'm like, you could just go straight into SB Lotto Knight considering all the synchros you have, but Dark would probably just make it easier. You don't have to commit one of your synchros into making SP Little Knight. Now you can just steal a monster from their graveyard and go into SP. So that's, it's not the worst idea, but extra deck space in this deck is kind of tight once you start putting all the pieces together. And I'm not sure if Dark has a real place in this extra deck. It seems a very like, you have to know how to use it properly kind of thing. And then SP, broken card. Next, what I want to show you is the, is a TG list that made it to day two at YCS Richmond. Now this isn't even a locals level. To make it to day two at a YCS, and especially a YCS Richmond, which had around 1,900 people, that means you needed at least seven wins, seven out of nine wins day one, which means he went X2 day one and made it to day two. And maybe he didn't make it to day two, but the fact that TG could get seven wins in one of the highest competitive events, even if that's not top 32 worthy, that's still really good. Out of 1900 people that you gotta be at least in the top like two or 300, I think, to, to make it to day two. I still count that it's not like a win-win, but it's still a win. And so this one is, first off, the difference between Booster Raptor and Drillfish, I think is night and day because Drillfish can only be summoned while you um, control only TG, while it's Booster Raptor, can be summoned if you just control the TG monster. So it's not like you have to only control TGs. Now it's like, if you just happen to have one, you could still summon Booster Raptor. Also, Drillfish is an activated effect to summon itself, whereas Booster Raptor is just a summoning condition. So it just plops on the field. Otherwise, we're on three Salamander in this build. We're still on three Diabell Star, still on Ash. We're still on Wanted Poster one for one. This one is playing Tax in the main deck, which I think is also a smart thing to do. Hand traps will slap you silly if you're not prepared for them. I'm not too sure if Thrust is great going first because I don't know what you would set other than Imperm, but going second, Thrust is probably great for you know all the one ofs in his uh, side. It's probably a really good card to like make sure that he can play through things. And then Triple Tactics Talents is a great card for playing through hand traps and potentially stopping your opponent. We're still on the Cross Out Copium. I think we're on one less card. I think the other build played, oh no, we're on one more card. We're at 41. The other build played a uh, 41. So we're on one more card. So the cross out here is slightly less effective, but it also, you're kind of just playing more copies with it when you consider the triple tactics. And we're on less copies of hand traps as well. But with the triple tactic, I'm not really too mad at this. Now with the lack of Kepler, I'm a little surprised this, this deck was able to do so well because I think Kepler being a normal summon was really good. And Salamander by itself usually doesn't mean much, but as long as like Breaker Limiter resolves, like you should be all right. So in this list, the differences that we see is uh, we see the Chaos Angel, right? And that's because as I mentioned before, light and dark. So it will have both effects. And because it's a um, Axel Synchro and not just a regular Synchro, it'll be summoned during your opponent's turn. It'll banish a card on field and then it'll make all Synchro monsters you control like unaffected. We don't see any SP Little Knight. I don't know if that's because of budget or if that's a personal choice, but we do see Triple Dragonar, which is as I was saying, it's good for recovery. We do still see it a double Star Guardian. Again, I, d I don't personally agree with, but I can understand why they do it. Single Mighty Striker and Trident Launcher. And now we even have like a side deck. So we have the single shifter for cross out as well. We have Bestials. It probably makes going up syn synchro climbing a lot easier if you resolve one of these Bestials and you know, and, and it stays on the field during your turn. Phantasma is for like Unchained and like Link matchups, you know, to kind of like manipulate your hand and make sure you have a way to stop cards to target. Again, like Unchained. Dark Ruler, Herald and Lightning Storm and Evenly for Thrust. 
um, all to help you play going second. It's a really good idea to max out on some of these so that you have all the cards that you need to play around the really strong boards. Honestly, I don't think this deck needs its battle phase to win. So I would personally go for more evilies instead of lightning storms, but I can understand why they pick evenly. D barrier to I guess D barrier is a perfect thrust target if you get hand trap going first. Like D barrier is a really good card to just stop your opponent from playing. So seeing D barrier at one actually makes sense here. We see double anti spell. And the thing about like playing um, some of these side in cards is that in a normal TG combo, you're drawing like three to four cards after searching, presumably like two or three times. So that's you're going like six cards deeper into your deck. So it, it might actually be very likely that you draw some of your um, side ins if the whole combo resolves, especially if you use like cross out wanted poster, limiter remover, cross out. That's like eight cards from deck. And then you draw three after that. Actually, that's 10 cards because you're grabbing all clear and TG close and 11 if you don't um, open the tank rep and you search it off of uh, the all clear. So that's like 11 cards you're losing out of your deck and then you're drawing three. So it's very likely that you may draw into some of your great non-engine like your triple tax, some of your hand traps, or even your side ends. And lastly, we have Scarlight, Red Dragon Archfiend for time. It may not seem like it makes sense in a deck like this, but it's like a level one tuner plus Dia Bellstar, or it could be a level five plus, like one of your level fives plus like a Screw Serpent manipulating level to make Hyper Librarian level six and then go into Scarlight. So you have like multiple ways into it. It may not be the easiest thing in the world to, to make, but it's definitely possible considering the circumstances. So I can see why a deck like this can make it to today too. Not just because of the surprise factor of people not knowing how to play against TGs, which at the moment is a Calamity dot deck. So if Calamity resolves, you probably just steal some games, but also because I feel like this deck was created to play around a lot of things in the format. And I think that's like the best way to, to play a deck at the moment. Instead of hyper-focusing on one matchup, you kind of play a cards that you do, do well into a barrage of matchups and you kind of like win more consistently from there. So those are the two TG builds that I think were really interesting. The builds will evolve with time. There will be more cards coming out next year that kind of uh, make TG's better, you know, like 2023 was like the year of the synchro. It's like synchros and fire decks have been really, really good this year. Synchro decks in particular, because we've had a lot of decks like Adventure Synchron, Nadium, Super Heavy Samurai, even Red Dragon Archfiend. We've had a lot of cool synchro decks and we're, and we're ending the year on Centurion. Synchros have kind of just time to like come home and roost, build their strength back up this year, thanks to all the support and to cards like Crimson Dragon allowing for degenerate strategies to continue. Next year, that'll only perpetuate with Gen X, Infernoid coming back into the picture. Although Infernoids in OCG right now are more Link-based than Synchro-based, it could be a Synchro deck. TG's, I do think they have a place in the future of Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm just not sure. Although it's very liked by the community, it's not very popular because people view it as a linear combo deck. And although it may be played that way, I'm hoping in the future, as time you know continues and more people play the game, more people pick up this deck and try to do their own thing with it because clearly there's a lot of room for innovation in a deck like this. So getting into some of the combos, let's start with the bare minimum. We're gonna start with just what does a single Salamander get you? This may not be the one card combo that makes the deck good. This is simply just showing you what a single Salamander can do. And most times, it's not much. Salamander by itself is not the real starter for the deck. Simple Spoils makes it a starter, but by itself, Salamander is not the best starter. You could synchro up into something like a Baron during your opponent's turn, because once you go into Dragonar, you're locked into TGs. But otherwise, Baron plus like non-engine probably isn't the worst thing either, but it's not the best thing either, right? We're going to go with Salamander plus TG Gear Zombie, which we didn't see in a lot of the lists that were competitive, but I do think it's somewhat of a staple, at least at one, in the TG deck, in my personal opinion. Uh, so what ends up going, going on here is that by going into Mighty Striker, you're allowed to search TG all clear. TG all clear gets you tank rev, and then Mighty Striker mills TG close. TG close will eventually be able to reset itself from the graveyard, effectively making Mighty Striker a plus two. And now Tank Rub is going to be able to be normal summoned because all clear allows you to normal summon a TG on top of your regular summon once per turn. So, 
And then because even though TG is a tuner, it can be still it can still be used as a non-tuner for the synchro summon. So now we're allowed to summon Dragonar and look at how many TGs are in our graveyard. We've stacked our graveyard full of TG monsters, and now our four for the core is kind of doing its thing, right? We're reviving all our TG monsters. We're going into Reciprocal Dragonfly, and Dragonfly is a bit more of like an out there combo kind of TG card. So if you're really committed to being a more combo focused build, Dragonfly may be the card for you. Also, if you can't afford some of the sinful spoil stuff and you're playing mostly pure a TG, like if, if you can't afford like some of the alternative engines, pure TG with Dragonfly actually works pretty well. You just have to know how to use it properly. So we're gonna get Tank Rub to get our token. We're gonna go into Star Guardian. Now, you notice that even though we have the ability to go into Hyper Librarian, we chose not to go into it yet because sometimes Hyper Librarian is convenient to be the first one to be summoned, but other times, for the sake of your combo ceiling, you have to go into Hyper Librarian last, or sometimes even not at all, to allow you to make your boards properly. So, what we did here is we went into Shooting Star Dragon TGEX, and this is an alternative way to make some of your boards that you'll see later on. It's all it's it's an alternative to TG Blade Blaster, which I've come to realize is actually a little better than Blade Blaster, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So now we're going to TG Trident Launcher, and it's really convenient because Star Guardian got the eye of the TG back to hand, and we stacked our, our graveyard full of different TG monsters. So we'll basically be able to summon any TG from deck for free. We'll still have Salamander, and we'll be able to revive one from graveyard. So it's a really good um, card for swarming our board at the moment. Now Dragonfly is finally able to pull off its its duty because now we'll be able to tribute the TGEX and summon back the two Synchro Monster series as, as material. Just be really careful with this card because it can only be it can only use its effect if the non or, or if the materials for a Synchro Monster is Synchro Monsters themselves. So if because this TGEX was made using two Synchro Monsters, we're gonna summon those two Synchro Monsters back. It's like D Synchro except only for summoning synchros back, not regular effect monsters. And now what that allowed us to do is that allowed us to make a Glaive Blaster without uh, using our Mighty Striker, which is gonna be really important later on. So now we get to revive um, our Glaive Blaster. I mean, we get to revive Tank Rub and now um, go into Mighty Striker. Now we're not gonna use Mighty Striker effect because we already did. But Glaive Blaster is going to be able to banish Mighty Striker. And so what happens is a double trigger here. So Glaive Blaster triggers first because its trigger effect is that when a monster is banished face up, you can target one and then special summon it back to your field, ignoring its summoning conditions, which is great. Also, when a Synchro monster is banished from anywhere, it doesn't really matter where, while this card's in your graveyard, it can reset itself. So now you have a counter trap that's going to be live and you get to revive the monster that you just banished. Now during our opponent's main phase, now they get turn priority, so they get to go, so they get to make the first move. But once they've done something, you'll be able to prop off the Mighty Striker and go into TG over Dragonar. Now this may seem like a little vulnerable because it's like Dragonar may lose to like Imperm and Veiler and stuff. But while it's under Trident Launcher, TG Synchro Monsters can't be targeted, meaning they can't Imperm this. You know, in case they had Imperm, in case Imperm was like the, the card in their hand. Um. And so we're gonna be able to revive a lot of our synchro monsters here and go for some crazy plays. Now we are locked in, into TG's because we use Dragonar, but that allows us to summon out our TG Halberd Cannon. Um, and then Star Guardian was also able to get us follow up by adding the Screw Serpent back from Grey to hand, because again, it doesn't need to be synchro summoned to use that part of its effect. Also, if they have some sort of interruption for the um, for the Star Guardian, again, like Trident Launcher points to it, so they may not be able to activate that card. And now we have a Hopper Ganon, which negates summons. It doesn't even negate effects, just negates summons. And then we have Glade Blaster, which it can banish an extra monster from field like twice a turn. It's it's a really useful card. And then we have another card, TGEX. I know it's not um, sequenced to be pointed under Trident Launcher, but it doesn't really matter because if your opponent activates a monster effect that targets a monster you control, he can also stop the opponent from activating that card and you have TG Close, which is a 
Omni negate while you control a machine TG. Now, while you control the continuous spell, all your TGs are machines, but in, even if we didn't control the uh, continuous spell, we have two machine or three machine TGs on our field. So it's, it's very useful. Let's say you're, you're like, well, that was cool, Nistro, but like, that seems a little gimmicky. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna keep it simple this time. This time we're gonna show you the Crimson Dragon shenanigans. We're not gonna do any of the, uh, we're, we're gonna stray a little more from the pure build and focus a little more on what the engine itself can do. So now we're going into our, you know, Dragon R, and then we're making Hyper Librarian first, allowing us to get multiple draws before we um, go into our bigger synchro. So we get the Star Guardian, and then Star Guardian is going to be able to special summon the Screw Servant, go into another level 5 non tuner, draw another card, and then we synchro summon Glade Blaster. We've, we've effectively drawn three cards this turn, and then we get to turn Star Guardian or Hyper Librarian into a Synchro. Now we're going to go into our Blade Blaster, and we're going to use Glaive Blaster's effect to banish Blade Blaster, and that's going to trigger, as just like earlier, it's going to trigger Glaive Blaster, and it's going to trigger TG Close. Um, I like to do Chain Link 1, Chain Link 2 on TG Close, but you could do it the other way around to play, play around Ghost Bell, I guess. Allowing us to bring back the Blade Blaster and bring back TG Close. Now during your opponent's draw phase, and it has to be during draw phase, you can use Blade Blaster's effect, banishing Mighty Striker from your graveyard to banish itself. Now what that does is that that will also trigger Glade Blaster because Glade Blaster doesn't care what a Synchro Monster is banished from, so Glade Blaster will be able to revive Mighty Striker. And once it hits standby phase, Blade Blaster itself will come back because it doesn't say during the next turn standby phase, it just says during the next standby phase after it's banished by its own effect. Meaning you activate it in draw phase, it comes back during the standby phase, and once it hits main phase, you're able to sort of uh, work up synchro. So now we get to trigger our Mighty Striker in main phase. Um, after our opponent gets the first move, Mighty Striker gets to mill one. Which, milling the break limiter is actually really important because it allows you to recycle some of your TG spell uh, synchro monsters. So, like, because, like, if you don't do that, then, like, and you only on two Dragonar, your Dragonars may get stuck in the graveyard. But if you mill your limiter remover, in case you didn't draw it, like, first turn, it allows you to bring them back to extra deck and then keep on playing. Turn two, turn three, and... So now we're going to use Crimson Dragon, targeting uh, Glade Blaster, Summon Calamity, and that's pretty much going to end their turn. You have, you know, two 4k beaters on your field on top of follow-up, on top of a counter trap. I think you should be good there. Now I want to start showing you how to play around certain hand traps and stuff. So this is a kind of stacked hand, and it's just to show you all the possibilities at once. TG All Clear, you know, just gives you extra normal summon, so just normal one, normal two, and then go into Dragonar, right? And let's say they realize that Dragonar is the most important synchro on the deck and it needs to be interrupted. Let's say people learn the matchup game two or game three and they realize, let's just negate the junk speeder like card to see what happens. Here are some alternative cards to play if you don't like playing cross out. Offerings to the Doom. And as a Rescue Ace player, I've played Book of Moon for a long time to dodge Imperm and stuff. And I know nowadays you can use SP Little Knight so you don't need the Book of Moon. But it's good to just play a card like Offerings to the Doom because it helps you break boards and it helps you make boards. So now by chaining, chain link 3 this Offerings to the Doom to Baylor, Dragonar is going to get destroyed, but it's going to dodge the Imperm. It's going to be able to revive the TG monsters from Graveyard, which ironically enough, includes itself. If it hits the Grave before its effect resolves, it'll be able to bring itself back from the Graveyard, allowing you to effectively play around this Imperm, to, to effectively one for one the Imperm, without losing your actual combo, which is really important. Now, clearly this is this is not the full combo, that it's really just to show you that you have a player on Imperm. And as you can see, there's another card in the player hand that will do a very similar thing. So now, when I use my Imperm on this Dragonar, they also have the ability to use Enemy Controller. Now, Enemy Controller is a great card for going second, um, a lot of Manadium players and uh, people this format are on enemy controller because it's helpful for breaking boards. 
and it also works with TG Dragonar. If they try to use an imperm like effect on TG Dragonar, all you gotta do is chain Econ, Econ Tribute. Once everything resolves, you'll have an extra monster on your field on top of however many TGs that you wanna summon off of Dragonar's effect. Now, Dragonar does have the effect, I, I guess I kinda glazed over this, that when it's destroyed, it draws a card, but the way that it works in TCG, is if something moves somewhere and has a trigger effect of going to that place, but it also moves out of that place before the chain link ends or before like all the chain links resolve, then it won't be counted as touching the graveyard. So basically because it was destroyed, but it didn't stay in the graveyard, it won't get its trigger effect. Just a little tidbit for you there. Now we're getting to explore some of the alternative engines, you know, um, how you get from Diabell Star into the TG combos. And as I described earlier, it's really just Snake Eye Ash carrying the whole thing. I'm gonna just let this play out because I'm sure you guys already get the gist by now. You all clear, all clear get you Serpent. You can mill close because you already have uh, the tank rub in graveyard. And then you go for your Dragonar. So Grub, I'm getting you the token. Salamander reviving uh, Screw Serpent because everything's machine. Hyper Librarian. And yeah, Hyper Librarian's mandatory, so it'll always be Chain Link 1 in, in, in case uh, you didn't know. And then I, I did go for Power Glider here just because I, I just wanted to show it, but you know, you could go for a second Dragon Art. Like this card will be just another level five synchro. Like you don't have to play it. It's, it's always correct to play the Dragon Art over this because you will always rather have Dragonar than Gladiator, like almost always. Unless you really desperately need that 200 extra damage without getting like playing into Nib or something. Now we go Glade Blaster, draw our third card, banish, get our triggers, close, blaster, and then we pass turn. So, as you noticed, we didn't go for any Crimson Dragon sort of play here, and we rarely easily could have, but I just wanted to showcase what a combo like Late Blaster plus a Baron could do, because it's it's also an interesting way to go about playing the deck. Whatever you may banish with your opponent, could could you can take to your field and possibly use their effect as well, you know? But yes, you could Crimson, you could Baron, you can kind of do whatever. It's still the same combo, but this is just like where it ends. Like this is just off of one simple spoils resolving. And I didn't even get the shuffle back with the wanted poster. I, I actually completely forgot to do that. So this, we would have gotten a fourth card in hand. But the funny thing about forgetting wanted poster, which is what I've learned is that you kind of don't get punished for forgetting wanted poster because turn three, you can just shuffle, you can just use the original simple spoils secondary effect shuffle back via bell star and add a level one fire anyway so you kind of like don't really get too punished you you either get the card this turn you get a random card turn one or you get a guaranteed card turn three so forgetting wanted poster is not the end of the world i want to kind of showcase a, a, a kind of out there combo i found this one from the tg discord and they found it on like a japanese player's twitter so hope you guys enjoy as you know, we always start with the Mighty Striker. If it, if we can control it, we go for all clear, all clear, pop our Striker, get our Grub. Striker is gonna mill our TG close since we have our fourth foot core already. We go Axel Synchro into Mighty Striker, and this threatens Nibiru because you know one more summon and we have an Omni, so he has to nib here. But the cool thing is, is we have our, our original Sinful Spoils. So we go Salamander. Salamander is gonna tribute, summon Screw Serpent. And guess what we just did? We just made Dragonar through Nibiru. We didn't have to use any bricks or any alternative cards really other than Axel Synchro to um, allow us to play through Nibiru. But like, Axel Synchro is a card that like, uh, if you play any other Synchro deck, you'll have access to anyway, or you, you should have sitting around anyway, uh, assuming that you played like the game during Cyber Cyberstorm Axis format. It shouldn't be too hard to like add that, those those extra cards to your deck. And especially now that Baron's like a, a really budget card. That being said, there are, there are also ways where instead of popping, you know, with the all clear, if you have an RTG in hand already, you can just Synchro summon with 
the first Mighty Striker in, uh, straight into Baron if you have like a level eight non-tuner, which we will see a little later. So you may not always have to use this particular combo, but this is done only using Limiter Removal plus Sinful Spoils. You can play through a nib. You're gonna be sacrificing two, two other cards in hand, yes, but at the same time, it's, you're, all, you're also not losing to one of the most destructive hand traps in the game. So, it is a net cost of four cards in hand, and you won't be able to make Hyper Librarian to bring those cards back because you have a limited number of slots and you, and you need to make a board. So, unfortunately, you won't be able to get those cards back, but the ability just to even make a board still through the Nibiru will probably be enough because you're going to be going for, for Crimson Dragon and you're going to be turn skipping. So draw phase, right? We go into our Crimson Dragon play. Droplet, negate. And we're gonna Mighty Striker, get our Crimson. Now, I know this dude has Gamma in his hand and you know, he could have Gamma the Mighty Striker. I see that now, right? But this is only playing through Nib, okay? This is a situation where he's playing through Nib. Gamma just happened to be in the list. It's it's not important to the video. We, we, play, we play through Nibiru. Now, Nibiru plus another hand trap, maybe not, but we play through Nibiru, okay? So now we have our Horus Kepler look, and this version of the deck loses hard to draw. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this right now. If you choose to play the Horus engine, you will lose hard to draw, but you won't really lose to, mo to, to, to much else. So we were able to get Dark Contract, and then we were able to get to Lamia. Lamia is going to be discarded with the Imcity, and we're going to be able to get King Sarcophagus. We drew Gizmec Orochi, which happened to be a really funny way. Um, I kind of just wanted to imply that you don't need to play all of the Horus monsters, or if you can't afford the Horus monster, Gizmec Orochi kind of works just as well. I'm assuming you don't mill your like one ofs off of it. Yes, you can King Sarcophagus drop Imcity, and then you can drop Happy, discarding whatever you draw off of, off of Imcity, and now you have sort of full combo plus protection. So you summon Imcity, you summon Happy. If they have the Bistial, they have it, you know, because you, you already have the Kepler on field. And in that situation, you wouldn't want to use Imcity any earlier because you want to make sure you get your Kepler and your Gate on field for, for Lamia to come back. The risk is Imcity may lose to an Ash Blossom, but the reward is that you're able to make a really strong negate or bait out a hand trap before you actually start going into your combo. And if your opponent is looking at your hand and field right now, they're not even sure what you're playing. No shot that they are that they know what you're playing since you just normal summon Kepler and then discarded a Horus monster. They don't know what sauce is in your deck right now. And you they, they won't know until you start to synchro summon. So it's actually really funny. But yeah, we got Lamia here. Again, the best normal summon for the deck. This also works, like if you drew Kepler plus Limiter removal, that also works with Lamia because you can discard the Lamia for, for, for the plus two and you effectively don't lose the cards. You know, same thing for Dia Bellstar, you can drop the Lamia. So if, if you just need that extra monster or the extra card to discard, starting with Kepler is not the worst idea. So now we go into our true starter, Mighty Striker. And what's funny is, is that if we had another TG in hand already, we could just summon Gizmec and use it in Mighty Shark to go into Baron. But we already have Galaxy, so we don't need to go too hard in the sauce for that, right? But Baron helps us play around Imperm better, assuming we don't open any other ways to play around hand traps. So now we go into Dragonar, and just like last combo, because... Actually, no, we are able to make Hyper Librarian first. But because we don't have the space, actually, I thought we were going to start drawing, but because we don't have the space, we actually can't draw off a Hyper Librarian in this particular combo line because we just don't have the space to summon Hyper Librarian plus another Synchro after. We can't, we, we can't have to use a Hyper Librarian like immediately. So then we go Star Guardian, Star Guardian, add it back our level four, summon it out. Boom. We go Blade Blaster. And then from Blade Blaster, as you know, during our turn, we're able to banish it, reset the TG close, and then during your opponent's turn, you're able to banish it and TG Mighty Striker to bring it, them both back and then go for Crimson Dragon and then Calamity. So Calamity plus a Monster Negate and a Omni Counter Trap Negate, you get the picture. And this is off of just two cards, off of just two cards. So it's, it's really cool. I wanna show you guys the potential of Droll or the way that Droll doesn't hurt us. And this is kind of like a 
sort of argument for playing more more TG monsters in your build because the more that you draw, the less the droll affects you. And I know droll is very big this format and they might droll you because they don't know. Like once they read all clear, they're gonna be like, wait, they're gonna search again? Let me droll them, right? Like they just search a card that's gonna search them another card. Let me droll them. But that doesn't actually always work. So we have Salamander and Booster Raptor, which could be Drillfish. It's, it's either one, but I just like Booster Raptor better. Now we're going to use Salamander to summon out our Tank Grub. And now we have access into our real starter, which is Mighty Striker. Mighty Striker is going to get us all clear. And oh no, we got drilled. Well, not that big of a deal because we can still use all clear to add TGs from Graveyard to hand as well. Meaning... It's kind of not dead, but also we've already used our Booster Raptor summon and Tank Rub, so it's not even like we're, we're uh, we need a TG from Grey Red at the moment. We can just keep Mighty Striker on field. So this is an argument for playing more Screw Serpent and more TG names in general. We're able to go into Over Dragonar, and we just play through Droll. Sometimes you have to sequence summoning the token and summoning uh, off of Salamander differently, but most times it's very straightforward. Um, and this time we're not going for the typical way that you summon uh, King Calamity. This time we're going for something a little funnier. Now, I just want to say here, although when you Synchro Summon Calamity, the, syn the, the effect that Synchro Summons it cannot be chain to, Calamity's effect itself can be chain linked to because Hyper Librarian is a mandatory effect and then Calamity is going to be chain linked to, which means you get to draw a card without them interrupting your draw. Clearly, you don't draw as much as like the other combos, but it's still a very good way to, you know, get a little more card advantage, possibly draw into more non engine before we play. Now, and this is where Calamity kind of becomes a little funnier. Let's say they set up a board where they're like, well, I can't play for the turn because I got Calamitied. And now you're sitting on TG Star Guardian and you're like, okay, well, before you end your turn, Synchro Summon Satellite Warrior, Satellite Warrior Effect, destroy basically your whole field because we have five Synchros in Graveyard. Like that's practically the entire field that they could set up. And then Satellite Warrior is going to gain a thousand for each card that's destroyed. So that's most likely going to be game. I can't imagine what deck could play through Satellite Warrior like this. Assuming they don't open non-engine like this, this one's the game it's funnier but it's a little more vulnerable as well i would like to do this with like some sort of negation like some solemn judgment or like an um, anti-spell fragrance in the back row so that i don't lose to like random shit but at the same time this is funny like even by itself i don't think people will go for this play often but it's an option if you know your opponent is on a deck that like maybe that's a little slower like labyrinth or like trap tricks and you calamity them then you satellite warrior them i think you should be good so now i want to show you guys Although it is a, you know, your typical TG combo, you know, where you start with Gear Zombie plus Salamander. It can also be starting with Limiter Remover. And you go into Mighty Striker, all clear to get your Tank Rub. Mill your close. And now we're going Dragonar. Get our four for the core. Get our triple draw off of Hyper Librarian. Bring back uh, Screw Serpent. Summon off a of Star Guardian. Double, second draw off a of Librarian. Third draw off a of Librarian. And now we're going for the Shooting Star Dragon TGEX. Now this is going to be really important because when you do this, this means Instead of banishing the Mighty Striker during your opponent's turn and then bringing it back with Glade Blaster, you get to banish a Mighty Striker during your turn, meaning you get to bring it back during your turn, and then now you have both Mighty Striker and your monster already on field, allowing you to have an extra revival during your opponent's turn. And you're gonna see why that's important in a second. So the reason why that works, let me let me just explain why that works, is because Screw Serpent has a has an ignition effect in Graveyard where it could banish itself target a monster you control and then increase its level but because it's targeting tgex tgex can banish mighty striker to negate screw serpent's banish effect meaning you get to banish mighty striker and then on resolution glade blaster will trigger and your tg close will trigger so 
instead of having to use Glade Blaster's uh, weird effect to banish something and then bring it back, you can save Glade Blaster's effect uh, for banishing and instead just use it use a TGEX's um, banishing effect. So now we get the double trigger, get back the Mighty Strucker, and get back to close. Now once it hits their main phase, we're gonna go for Mighty Striker. And we kind of don't, like, I know for Kalambi, again, like we have to wait till Chain Link 1, but for this particular combo, we don't, because we're going into Crimson, it doesn't matter. Uh, and we get to go into Cosmic Blazar. And that's important because when you activate Cosmic Blazar, it banishes itself. But on resolution, Glade Blaster can bring back the Cosmic Blazar. Meaning you get two negates off of it well, um, while Glade Blast is on field and not just one. Now, the reason why this works is because although Cosmic Blazar must be synchro summoned, Glade Blaster can bring it back ignoring its summoning conditions. Meaning that effectively Blazar becomes this broken double negate while Glade Blaster is on field, allowing this sort of synergy that it that can only be achieved through the, through these two exact synchros being on field at the same time, which is not hard to make happen, right? Because if Calamity gets banned, this is the way that you're going to be playing that, that you're going to be seeing TG get played. You're going to be seeing the Blazar instead of the Calamity, and it's not even like hard to make because you just need to go into TG EX instead of TG Blade Blaster. And as a matter of fact. TG EX is preferable to Blade Blaster because it allows you, it gives you more options during your opponent's turn to revive something that you banish from their field because Blade Blaster can revive any banish, any monster that's banished face up, including your opponent. So if your opponent banishes something face up that you think they may be trying to revive or bring back, like a Visa Starfrost, you can, you can steal that as well, you know? So it, it's, it's very, the TG EX combo, I know I, show blade blaster for like the last 20 minutes but the ex combo is better i would say this should be how tg is played from this point forward like once tg players know about tg ex and the way that it can be used i don't think they should still be on blade blaster but that's just my personal opinion and then you know yeah just showing casing that we get double blazar plus close plus two banishes of extra deck monsters kind of crazy and all that off of two cards so it's like any sub engine that you saw like the ddd package the wanted package both of those engines can still go into tg glade blaster let's say you're something of a budget player you can't afford the wanted engine and you can't afford a crimson dragon either let's say you can only afford the bare minimum for what you need for tg so i'm going to show you guys a alternative way to play TG. Now, we're going to be using Miscellaneousaurus, which this used to be a spicy tech back in the day before this Age of Overlord support because your Booster Raptor is a level 1 dinosaur and you know how broken Miscellaneousaurus is with level 1 dinosaurs. It may mean you need to play multiple copies of your Booster Raptor, but it also means that you have more ways into it. Basically, drawing a Fossil Dig means you have Booster Raptor or you can get Miscellaneousaurus to summon Booster Raptor from deck. So you can summon Booster Raptor with, with its own effect and you get some Booster Raptor from deck. That helps you with Trident Launcher, that helps you with a bunch of other things. So now, there's this other cool spell card called Gadget Box, which is sort of like a, I'm, I'm surprised more Synchro decks aren't on this card. I guess because there aren't that many low level Synchros that start combos in the modern age, but basically when it's activated, you place three counters on it, and then once per turn, you can remove a counter from it and then summon a level one Gadget Box token. Now, while that token is in the monster zone, you're locked into synchro summoning, but kind of like a sword soul token, but that's kind of not a big deal because you can do a lot with, with your synchro summons. So you can go gadget box, summon, and now we get to go into our starter. Allowing us to get our four for the core very easily. And we still get our double summon off of um, all clear that we haven't used yet because we we just wanted to make sure we had space before we get, went into um, our normal summon. So now we get to go Hyper Librarian, we get to draw one. Go into our Star Guardian, draw another. And then summon out, 
Need to go into our Glaive Blaster. TG close. Summon it back. Now our Miscellaneous Source comes into play, allowing us to summon our final level one non-tuner from deck. And now we have to go Wonder Magician to pop our Gadget Box. So now I get to the TG close one of our opponent's monster effects. Go for Wonder Magician into Satellite. Satellite is going to allow us to pop multiple cards our opponent controls, right? Because we have so many synchros in the graveyard already. Oh, I guess we do we do go into Crimson Dragon in this combo. Um, my fault for saying you, if you can't afford Crimson Dragon, I, I guess you got to pay that cost. But in case Calamity gets banned, this may be the best way to go into Blazar Dragon because now we've cleared their board and we still get the double negate off of Blazar because we have not used Blade Blaster's effect to negate stuff yet. I mean, or to revive banished cards yet. But that took more, that took one extra TG tuner, uh, TG non-tuner than we would have normally. Or actually it would take two extra cards because it, it would mean we would need to summon five off of Dragonar and then also still have another level one non-tuner. So that's why I think Miscellaneous Horus may still have a place in the deck in the future once Calamity is banned. But as of right now, this is kind of more just like, just because it works, but let me just show it to you guys, right? And I think this is gonna be the final combo that I show you guys. It's, it's been a really long time since this video started and we're gonna hit, get hit with the, with the frame one shifter. Now the frame one shifter is very unfortunate for TG because TG needs a lot of its resources to hit Grave for our junk speeder to work, right? Our, our, our over Dragonar needs resources and Grave to work. So how can we navigate a situation where we're locked from using our graveyard for the turn? And I'll tell you how. This may look like a, a six card combo, but in reality, you really only need four cards. <laughs> we need four cards to play through Shifter. And I know like some of these may seem like more out there cards, but trust me, they work. So we got our Fenrir. Fenrir can summon itself and then add another copy. We have our Break Limiter. And discarding whatever unfortunate soul that, you know, cannot be used um, currently, but because it discards, it can still be activated. So now we have, we're gonna be searching our Striker plus our Booster Raptor. Now we normal summon our Striker, special summon Booster Raptor, and then we're able to go into our Tatsunoko. Now Tatsunoko is kind of cool because now that Fenrir that we just searched off of uh, <laughs> Fenrir's effect, we can use that Fenrir from hand as synchro material to make a really interesting synchro that I don't see talked about much anymore. The Ice Jade Gimmer Agerine or Igerine. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce that. But basically what this does is its quick effect is based on monsters that you, you control cannot be destroyed or banished by your opponent's card effects this turn. That doesn't just apply to face up monsters you currently control, that applies to every monster you will have on the field for the rest of this turn. Meaning, as I will showcase shortly, that once you activate this the Ice Shade Synchros effect, monsters start going to the graveyard again. And it's only monsters, and it's only monsters sent from field to grave. It's not monsters sent from deck to graveyard, not monsters sent from hand to graveyard, not monsters sent from extra deck to graveyard. It's only from field to the graveyard. So now we were able to use Synchro Overtake, allowing us to summon Jet Synchron basically from anywhere. If you sacrifice one extra deck slot, you have a guaranteed level one tuner. And if you, actually, and if you sacrifice some main deck slots, you have a guaranteed level one non-tuner, both of which are special summoned both of which don't use a normal summon, which means when you get to TG all clear, you have double normal summon, but considering that we had to draw the Fenrir and we had to draw like a card to discard off of limiter removal, we actually don't have any cards left. If this was a five card hand, we don't have anything left in hand, right? It's only if you had like a six card hand that you would have another card left in hand. But if you, in a five card hand, you would be completely pooped out right now. There you go, all clear, get our Salamander, Striker, gonna, again, Anything sent to Grave is banished, so you might as well banish. Uh, you might as well either not activate or just banish a card that you don't think will be useful. Turn three, we go for Salamander. Salamander gets Serpent. Serpent's gonna revive the Salamander, and now we go into Dragonar. Dragonar is gonna revive three of our most important cards. We're gonna go uh, Winter Magician to pop 
pop the uh, all clear. And as you can see, we've set up perfectly for our Warner Magician to resolve and summon out King Calamity. And we just made Calamity through Shifter. <laughs> And now turn three, I, I just wanted to show you guys the game isn't over, right? So let's say they, they no longer have access to Shifter. You can revive the Jet Synchron because we didn't use it to revive effect last turn. We summoned it off of the Synchro Overtake spell card, which locks us into Synchros the turn that we activate it, but that's not a problem for TG. And now the fact that it's in our graveyard and we get to use it as follow-up, discarding a card like Fenrir, which is kind of free to access as long as Fenrir is face up on field, is cool beans. and. Our gadget box has more morph um, morph counters on it, so we have to summon more tokens. We have to banish Screw Serpent, make our Mighty Sharker level 3, and then go into something like a Baron. And now, this is probably going to be game? Maybe? And we haven't even used our normal summon yet. Wow, look at that. Allowing us to go into another Dragonar, and Dragonar allowing us to make more TG Synchros, like Star Guardian. I guess at this point, it doesn't make much of a difference. But... We were still able to make a crazy board through Shifter. Obviously using some out there and inconsistent cards, but... I'm sure you guys get the point, right? And now we've even set up for a Glaive Blaster or another uh, kind of play going up into turn four. And that's assuming we don't OTK them. Assuming we don't OTK, which we probably will, but assuming we don't, you can keep going. That's kind of like what I wanted to show you guys with this combo, with this combo line, um, especially going into Calamity. It locks them out of evenly and maybe some potential board breakers you kind of just get to play through shifter really well if you play some of the more out there cards and i think these cards have space in the tg engine anyway um i think there's arguments where you can play these in tg regardless and it's only cards like sp little knight or trident launcher which may discourage you from playing these cards but these cards also make up for the fact that you may not be drawing certain starters so they actually do pretty well for what they are those were all the potential TG combos. And I just want to go back to explore or talk with you guys through some other potential techs for the TG deck that maybe we haven't explored. Um, we did summon Hopper at Cannon that one time. We did go through the potential of Gizmak to make a Baron. And so basically, um, instead of going into number 90, you can make a Baron instead, right? Uh, also, if you're playing Horns Package, you also have the option to make an Apo if you wanted. So that's, you know, personal preference. Um, I know I didn't talk about Gear Zombie much in the first half of the video, but once the combo started, uh, this card kind of started pulling it, pulling its weight. So I do think this card is somewhat of a staple in TG. I, I like it better than some of the non-tuners. I guess it, it is not as useful if you're not playing three uh, Screw Serpent, but I think it's, it's still really good for what it is if you draw it with a Gear Zombie because the um, extra tuner that you have when you summon it off of Dragonar is actually really, really good. Um, Satellite Warrior kind of showed, you know, pulled its weight. Like if you want a more budget build, um, like Satellite Warrior plus like a Baron is still possible. Satellite Warrior plus Blazar is possible. <laughs> Dragonfly when mixed with a TG EX or a Blade Blaster is still pretty good. I prefer it to be TG EX because it can revive itself from Grave. Um, if it's sent off of Dragonfly, it's, it's not the worst way to go out and put some potential side cards if you can't afford the Horus package. Alphas for going second and breaking boards, like you could bounce something, then summon it out again if they still control a monster you, and you control none. And even though you can't attack directly, being able to set up your potential Calamity or like Satellite Warrior plays turn three is still really great. Getting into your Dami Tufts. And your alternative horse cards, I don't think you should be playing the brick horse cards in this deck. I think you should be just be focusing on the ones to actually do something. So just Embassy, King Sarcophagus, and just one more. And I think the best one is Happy, but there's an argument that Domitef is quite is better than Happy. But I think Happy, just its ability to recur your graveyard and banish cards is just monumentally better if it happens compared to Diamond Tough just drawing you more cards. 
right? The super heavy package, it's really good because Infernal Flame Banshee, if you open just a super heavy package, you can either pivot between a uh, Baron de Fleur to, um, so you have a pendulum scale plus a negate, or you can go into a Banshee to search your Rocket Salamander. Post Phantom Nightmare, which comes out in February, you'd also be able to search Snake Eye Populous and go into some of the Snake Eye cards, but that is neither here nor there. Super Heavy can really work with the deck, like Super Heavy Engine has, even after the deck has been hit, the Super Heavy Engine has been kind of helping some decks uh, get some tops like Vanquish Soul and Manadium have also kind of been supplementing Super Heavy into their builds, so. Uh, it's a really good package for like setting up, and I think it could work really well in this deck. Warwolf, I think it's like a hard one of. If if you play it, it's more for pure builds. Um, if you're focusing more on a pure build and you want to make Dragonar during your opponent's turn, Mighty Striker plus Warwolf is the way to go. And then Cosmic Quasar is kind of cool. It can banish itself and then summon out a Quasar or a Blazar. So um, if Calamity ever gets banned and you want to like be, and you want to have a more aggressive kind of way to to bring out multiple quasars like cosmic quasar could be the card that you go into unfortunately it's effect to negate cards is not on synchro summon i think that would have been a lot better because then that would have allowed you to, to make it during your opponent's turn um banish it to summon out something like a blazar and then revive it with glade blaster but because it's an ignition tgs won't really be be able to make this during their turn but it's still something that they can use stardust warrior is like budget hybrid cannon it, i really wish that like tgs had a level 10 synchro like this i don't know in case you feel like you need the extra negation i don't think it's that great of a card but it's there um archween abyss ironically works like uh because dragon is level 5 dragon non-tuner a dragon synchro non-tuner and screw serpent's level 4 tuner so you can actually end up making abyss by accident Eagle Booster is actually a funny one as well. If you Synchro Summon Dragonar into extra monster zone and you have no other face-up monsters currently, then if they try to negate it, you can Eagle Booster and protect Dragonar from in interruptions like just completely. And yeah, allowing Dragonar to resolve without much issue. I'm a little surprised that, Eagle that more people aren't on Eagle Booster, but I guess that's kind of how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Like there are, there are texts like Eagle Booster that like not a lot of people are following. And like it, kind of works better than cross out going second because how do you play cross out into a board of negations whereas eagle booster into a board of negations does a lot better because they can really only like unless they can negate the eagle booster on top of the dragon arm which sometimes you can bait out the proper negates and then get eagle booster going that can kind of work in your favor super poly for breaking boards it kind of goes without explanation i think sometimes you may just need the extra support breaking a board instead of wasting some of your non-engine you can just super poly enemy controller showed it in the anti baylor stuff it's a really good going second card in this deck and i don't see why not to play it if you can like if you if you have space for it i think it's it's really worth it i think this is a really great card for combo decks going second playing into a board of front row negations or disruptions droplet for the same reason as enemy controller although droplet's more of like if you want to go for a game enemy controllers if you want to like play a safer game you know and enemy controller into like sp little knight or something is like kind of kind of goaded assuming it's not used on the dragon r summon so that can kind of work out in your favor uh droplet's cool shifter for cross out fossil dig for miscellaneous source and keep a pitch i saw a little bit talked about because rocket salamander has 600 defense but that's neither here nor there That'll be all for now. This has been your boy Nisha here. Let me know what you guys think of TGs. Let me know if you guys learned something. Uh, what build do you guys prefer? I very much like the horror stuff, but I know I, I understand how expensive the horror stuff is and I understand how expensive the wanted poster stuff is, especially now that the um, Fire King Shark deck is coming out and I know that Calamity is on. Like if this video doesn't come out by the time the ban list comes out, Calamity is gonna be on the chopping board. So there's a lot that's happening in the game right now and it's not easy to navigate the space but tgs are a very affordable deck and even your bottom line you can still summon you can summon calamity without using crimson or you or you can summon a blazar even though like blazar is harder to set up without using crimson it's still very possible um if not blazar you still have your supplemental cards like sat satellite baron now that is affordable and you can kind of like just pick and choose right like as i said at the beginning of the video you have your four for the core and then you have your end pieces 
And what you're really trying to do is manipulate your core to make your end pieces. And you just gotta know which ones you wanna make beforehand and just, you know, uh, study the routes to make those end pieces work. That's been all for now. This has been your boy Nature here, signing out, and I'll see you guys in the next one.